Okay, so the first part is going to be making the base, the bottom. Now, what size do we start with? Well, that all depends on your drawing. So if you take, or your, your vase template. So if you take your template and you can line it up here and you can imagine how wide it needs to be here, you can see that it probably needs to be about, mm, about this wide, okay? So that's about three and a half, four inches. This is actually the smallest you wanna go. It should not be smaller than this, okay? So here we go. Um, now remember, there's two different ways to start. We could start with a flat slab and then we could coil build up. But I find that it's actually the easiest way to start with a pinch pot. So to remind you, um, you wanna get about this much clay, okay? This is about the size if you make it into a ball, when you pound it into a ball. It's like the size of an apple. Okay, so you wanna start off with an apple size amount of clay. Now to remind you, this is how we make the pin, pinch pot. You in, insert your thumb there, and you're gonna press with your fingers at the bottom and slowly go around. And you're gonna go around, round, 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 round. Now, when I got this, um, pinched out enough, I'm gonna place it on its bottom, and we're gonna actually wanna make a flat bottom for this, okay? And then I'm gonna take my fingers, I'm gonna spread it out, and I'm gonna pinch it up, okay? Now, when you're making the base for this, you do want a flat bottom, because if it's round, then it won't be stable when it's sitting, your vase won't be stable when it's sitting on the table. So you really need to make sure that this bottom is nice and flat, and it's sturdy enough, so it won't fall down. Now everybody is gonna start like this. No matter what your design is, you're gonna wanna start with this basic shape um, and then we can alter it as we go, as you'll see in a moment. Okay. So now I have a good base to start. Now once you have this, you are going to use this. This is, remember, the wear board with a banding wheel on top. And what's nice about this is that as we work, we're gonna be able to turn this as we go and uh, it really is a great assistance, assistant to this. Remember, there's actually two different ways, two different ways to attach coils. I'm gonna show you the first one first, um, and then I'll show you the second one uh, afterwards. All right, so the first way to attach a coil. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the first um, technique to attach a coil. And right now I have just my pinch pot made. I'm gonna push that to the side. And now I'm gonna make uh, a coil with my hands. Now. To make a coil, I just roll the clay in my hands like this, and then I squeeze it as I turn. And I'm gonna go up here to squeeze it as I turn, like that. Okay, now to roll it out, make sure that your hands aren't closed like this, but they're actually spread out. It's gonna make it easier, and you can cover more areas. Now, when you're making coils, a little tip, do not have really thick areas and really small areas. This needs to be the consistent um, thickness all the way around so that your pot, pot doesn't get crooked, okay? Now, also look at the size of this. If you take this in consideration to my thumb, it's about the same um, thickness as my thumb. So this is what how we wanna be. Okay, so for this first technique, we're gonna take our coil and we're actually gonna flatten it down with our hand like this, okay? So I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna move it so you guys can see. I'm gonna flatten it with my hand. You're gonna put this at the edge of the table and you're gonna grab a serrated rib. With this serrated rib then, you can go by, go through, and scratch the edge so that we can use it to attach. Okay, so that side is now serrated and scored. With this technique, we must, must score and slip. So I have this edge. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna use this serrated rib and I am going to scratch it right there. Okay, so now both sides are, are scratched. Now I'm gonna take this flat coil and I'm gonna put it right on top. I'm gonna layer it right on top. Okay. 
Okay, now in order to cut this to the right size, you see how it's overlapping there? Take my needle tool and I'm just gonna go cut it right here. Boom. You're gonna actually have these two ends that you can come off and that ends up being the perfect size. Okay, so I'm gonna score and slip this, score and slip this, because these are the parts that we're gonna attach to each other. And we're gonna put them right like that. Okay, and pinch them together. Now this clay is soft, so I'm not gonna need to add any water to this. I'm just gonna be using my fingers to smooth it out. Okay, so to start, I'm going to put my hand right here on the inside to support it, and this hand is going to smooth out, smear it. So, you must do this step. You must do it. If you do not, this coil will totally pop off in the kiln and then your piece will be ruined and you won't get credit for it. Okay, so if I walk up and I see you guys working and you're stacking coil after coil but nothing is smoothed out, that is incorrect. After each coil, you need to make sure that you smooth the inside and outside and do not leave any gaps. It needs to be completely smeared in order for it not to break, okay? I'm a stickler on this. You need to go slow and you need to do this right. Do not rush this process. Okay, so here we go. I got another coil attached. Now I can start worrying about my shape and that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, now that I have one coil, I have my pinch pot and then I have one coil attached. Now I'm gonna start looking at my shape and seeing how I can move this and sculpt this so that it fits. Okay, so we, if we look at this on its profile, we can see that I need to have this go way out, okay? So this is the way that I'm gonna do that. I just attached a coil and I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna use my thumbs here. I'm gonna take my index finger fingers or my uh, middle fingers and index and they're gonna be a little bit higher. And I'm just gonna bend this towards me, okay? Now the key to this is that you have to do the same action consistently all the way around in order to make it even. If I was to take this and I would only do halfway and then I go over here, there's gonna be an area that isn't bend, bent enough. So I need to be really consistent in making sure that I'm doing the same exact motions all the way around my piece. Okay, so I'm bending it all the way around and making sure that it's consistent all the way. Okay, all right. Now, I don't know, maybe that's good, maybe it's not. Let's take check. Okay, so you see here, I started to um, high, so I still need to push this area out. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna push this even more out so that it meets it. Okay, that's looking better. So. I can also take my finger because you see this area right here, it kind of goes like that. So I'm gonna take my finger and just kind of get that going on. Okay, and then I'm gonna push this so it goes out some more. This process is really slow and you need to be very careful. Um, because we're working with a bigger piece, um, things can collapse a little bit easier and different things can go wrong. So you really wanna make sure that you're taking your time while you're building this. Okay, that looks pretty good, let me check. All right, that's not perfect, but when I add my second coil, I'm gonna be able to attach this so it goes out more. So you'll see how I do that next. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you the second way to attach a coil. All right, so I got my clay and I'm gonna start off just as before I need to make a coil. And it needs to be the thickness of my thumb, same as before. Okay, now this is a lot of clay. I can go ahead and cut that off. I know that this is gonna be plenty for my project. Okay. 
All right, so this is still not uh, thin enough, so I'm gonna take my hands with my fingers spread, and I'm gonna roll it out and see how it's consistent. There's some difference in the thickness, but it's minor. Okay, so for the second way to attach a coil, you're just gonna take your coil. You do not need to flatten it out like the previous thing. <clears throat> now with this coil, you're not gonna put it right on top, okay? And you're not gonna put it on the side. You need to put it kind of like in this halfway zone. You see that? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fingers and my thumb and I'm just going to pinch, okay? Now the angle of your hand when you do this will make it so that the clay is going a certain direction. So if I was to do this and my hand's going like this as I pinch, like say like this, that's gonna make it go in. But I need this to go a little bit more out for my piece. So I'm gonna angle it a little bit more outwards as I do this. Okay, so I'm gonna pinch with that angle and I'm gonna go all the way around. Now I don't need a score and slip for this one because I'm putting able to put a lot of force between these two pieces of clay. So um, that makes up for any score and slipping. Some people will say to still score and slip and you do want to score and slip if this clay was hard and you're attaching soft clay, you still want to score and slip, but I'm gonna show you guys that later. Okay, so I've attached this coil. Now at the end, what I did is I just put my thumb here and I just bent it. Okay, so I have this second coil attached where I pinched in. Now I still gotta smooth it out. So I'm gonna take my hand on the inside and use my fingers. I'm gonna smooth this out. Now on the inside, hand here, on the outside, taking my thumb, smearing it as I go. All right, so now I have this nice face. It's nice base, okay? So now I'm gonna take this, ooh, and I'm gonna compare it. Okay, it's better, but this still needs to go out some. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. I am going to pinch it, and as I pinch, I'm gonna go a little outwards like this. Okay, and to pinch, I'm gonna take my fingers, and it's almost like forming a V and they're gonna be pinching as I go up. Now this is gonna take some practice. You have to figure out what it's like to shape this the way that you want. I take my hands sometimes and I do a little angle up or in, and I'm trying to actually create a rounded, so you'll notice that I pinch out and then I just slightly go in towards the top just so that I can get that curve of the pot. All right, almost all the way around. I think I'm all the right way around now. Ooh, okay, so you see this pot is actually a little bit crooked. Let me give you a different view. All right, here we go. So you see that? I have a little crooked pot here. So if I look at this, I need this to go out farther here and I need this to go in. Okay, you wanna look at that profile. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my hand and I'm gonna push it out a little bit on this side. And on this side, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna push it in a little bit more. And we'll see if this works. Some of this is just experimentation. You need to figure out, okay, how can I move it just enough to get this to be even? All right, let's see, let's see how that looks. All right, I'm okay with that. Okay, so here we can see that this still needs to be pushed out more on this side. So I'm gonna take my hands, I'm gonna push it out a little bit, and then take a look again. 
All right, that's not too bad. It's a little bit crooked, but um, there we go. I think I got it now. All right, so I checked my two coils, I added them, and then I made sure that it was even. But when I take a look at my at my template, I noticed that this still needs to go out quite a bit more, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my hands, I'm gonna make it even, I'm gonna take my fingers on the inside, and I'm gonna stretch the clay a little bit so it goes outwards. And remember, you gotta do the same thing all the way around, keep it even, okay? stretching the clay. Now you wanna be very careful when you do this. You don't wanna do it too much. It's better to actually have it be smaller than it be too wide. Cause when it gets too wide, it actually gets a little bit out of control. So you wanna make sure that you keep it even. I'm gonna take a look at the shape. See if I need to fine tune it anywhere and then it's symmetrical on both sides when I look at it. Okay, that's okay. So I'm gonna check again. All right, that's a smaller gap. Now I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this gap because the next part of my, see if I was to take this, yeah. Anyway, uh, the next part of my project, when I add the next coil, I'm gonna be able to adjust this even more. So I'm actually okay with that. All right, so we're done with the first step. Um, after I add my two coils and um, I got the shape how I want, you actually don't wanna keep building because what that'll do is it'll make um, this area really weak and it might collapse. And if it collapses, you're gonna have to start all over. So try to aim to, for adding about two to three coils per day and no more than that.